Hey gang, welcome back to another video. In this installment of Derek Makes a Prop that spends 10 seconds on screen, I'm going to be jumping into a favorite from Empire Strikes Back. You might recognize it. Let's get to it. This whole build started when I acquired this 3D print of the NeuroSav TD 2.3 electro binoculars. There's quite a bit of sanding to get it to this point, but I'll spare you from having to watch that. Now, because there's still some print lines in some of the recesses, I'm going to hide them with a few layers of texture, starting with this fine texture spray paint, followed by some Super 77 spray adhesive. Then I can move on to a black base coat and then the final layer of an off-white spray paint, which also helps to hide the layer lines because of how thick it goes on. While I wait for that to dry, I decided that this prop needed a case. So I grabbed this one from my local hardware store, and after a few measurements and a trip to the fabric store, it was time to make this top panel and try to match the reference photo from Galaxy's Edge. I started by cutting out some 8th inch backer board, and then wrapped it with the quilted fabric and hot glued it in place, being sure to cut off any excess fabric that might prevent it from sitting flat within the molded parts of the case. Because quilted leather wasn't available at my fabric store, I decided to try coating the quilted fabric with Plasti Dip. I applied three wet coats, 30 minutes apart, to build up to the final piece, and then set it aside to dry for the rest of the day. Since most objects in the Star Wars universe are a bit banged up, I decided to do the same with my electro binoculars. Now any solid object will do for this step. I just started making my way around the prop looking for areas that I thought might get scratched up from use or being thrown into a bag or into the back of an X-Wing. And because the top layer of paint goes on so heavy, it helps to really sell the weathering since there's some dimension to the chipping. While I was working, I realized that the only way to really get the quilted piece to fit snug was going to be to remove the ridges from the top of the case. So I grabbed some tape to mask off the edges and prevent me from accidentally scuffing them in the process, and then I took my palm sander with some 60 grit paper and did my best to flatten out the top. It wasn't perfect but it was flat enough for the panel to sit flush inside. And after a quick dusting, it was time to paint the case. I used a spray paint that's designed for use with plastics, but found that this case may have had some kind of coating that prevented the paint from creating a durable bond to the surface. Now that works for this project, but if I had to do it over again, I'd have wiped it down with a solvent to allow for better adhesion. The next step in the build was to add some much needed details to the case in the form of these laser cut greeblies. I designed them in Illustrator based off the reference photo, and then I assembled them with a bit of CA glue and they were primed and painted in the same white paint as the case. While I wait for everything to thoroughly dry, I'm going to focus on the aging of the electro binoculars. I've decided to start with this thin wash and my airbrush to allow me to get into all the recesses and give it an overall grungy appearance. In hindsight, I went a bit heavy on this step and the outcome is a little cartoonish. But nothing ventured, nothing gained, right? Once I was finished with the airbrush, I switched back to oil paint for a darker pass of weathering. Brush on, wipe off, and repeat until you're happy with how it looks, and then let it dry.
Now that the paint has had sufficient time to dry, it's time to install the quilted panel. I'll be starting with hot glue to hold it in place, and then we'll drill some holes into the lid to insert hex head screws for added security, and to add more small details to the case. And speaking of details, I remembered that Ado from the Fabworks YouTube channel had made a 3D model of this part he saw at Galaxy's Edge available online, so I figured this would be a great time to put it to use. I printed one and painted it, and then used a bit of tape as a guide before scratching up the case to make for a better bond and glued it to the side. And since I'm adding details, I might as well get to these. The one on the left will hold an on-off switch and some LED lights, and the one on the right is just for decoration. But before I can glue them in place, I need to mark off where to drill to allow for my switch and lights. Now while I get to drilling, let's talk about how the lights will be wired up. I'll be running these lights off a 9 volt battery with an on-off switch inline between the positive terminal of the battery and the positive leads of the LEDs. When the button is in the off position, the current can't pass through it to turn on the lights. When the button is in the on position, it acts like a bridge, allowing the power to move freely from the battery to the LEDs. And with the lights and switch glued in place, it's time once again to mark off where I'll need to apply glue and then get to gluing. A quick test of the lights, and then I can add on the final part. This one I'll just eyeball. Now we're in the home stretch. The case needs to look like it's seen some action too. So just like I did with the electro binoculars earlier, I'll chip away at the paint and then we'll follow it up with a bit of oil paint weathering. And I think we can call this one finished. Well, there you have it. I just built a prop that spent more time on screen in this video than it did in the entire franchise. But whatever. It's a great piece to have in my collection and I'm happy I did it. Did I run into some problems? You bet. Did I show them in this video? You'll never know. Well, that's gonna do it for this one. Be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already, but most importantly, go make something. <laughs>